Happy New Year. We're back in Art One. We're talking about Bridget Riley. And she is an op artist. Optical illusion artist. That's short for um, op art is short for optical illusion artist. She's living. She's female. She's succeeding and thriving in the United Kingdom, which is in England. Okay. She is fabulous. So she came up with these optical illusions. I'm sure you've seen some of these before where your eye gets tricked. These are all just straight lines put on to paper or canvas meant to give you a almost sort of nauseous feeling. Like many other things, that we study and seem kind of, why is that fine art? She was the first of her time to do these things. Very simple line changes in some of these. Some of these are very intricate. In the 1960s, it was a time of were, uh, drug experimentation, psychedelic drugs in the 60s, like your grandparents' time and stuff. Not everybody, but it became very popular after the Vietnam War. It was kind of like a crazy time, disco music, lots of um, mood enhancements. And she decided to make these art artworks that kind of simulated that inside your brain. And people went bananas over it. And she's made a career over it. And we're going to study her today. Here she is. In the 1960s, pouring over a lot of her work. She's a superstar. Here's our page for our assignment. You can go ahead and rip it out of the packet. Another grid. What are you doing to us, Emily? Oh, calm down. I made the dashes for you. You're going to make a checkerboard. A grid, but it's going to be for a checkerboard now. Connect the dashes I gave you. You're welcome. Late Christmas present for some of you. If we were in class, I'd have you measuring. You'd be doing crazy measuring. Like, this hurts. My math brain is off in the art room. What are you doing to me? Crazy measurements. But because we're remote, and because I'm such a fan of you all, I made the dashes for you in the packet, so you do not have to worry about it. So when you get done, Carefully lining up your dashes, and if you don't have a ruler anymore, it went missing or whatever, it broke. Take a piece of the side of a magazine, book, junk mail, and make your dashes. That's all you, you know, connect your dashes. That's all you really need to do. Now, on the um, directions, I say I want you to find some household objects, but I'm not going to do that. Just find one cup. Okay, this is a Halloween cup my son got from his circus teacher. Isn't it cute? Boom. And I want you to put your the wider end of a cup around your paper in different spots. I really wouldn't have the circle overlap. So just fit as many as you can. Trust me, it makes it more interesting in the end. You can have the circle going off the paper. And make sure you put the cup in the sink on the dishwasher when you're done, because you just, nobody wants to drink out of the side of a cup with pencil all over it. Inside of the circles, you're going to erase where the grids fall. And you're going to take the line that would have went through them and bow it, either to the left or the right. When there's more than one line, in a circle, I like to bow them away from the center. So why don't you do that too? Looking all over the place for my eraser and guess what guys, it's at the end of my pencil. All right, bow. And continue to do that to all your circles. All right, so here you see, I went around to all my circles and I erased the lines that were already in them and I bowed them. One more thing to note is that 
Do you see it starts where it, and it would have started up here and ends where it would have ended down here. Next we're going to shade it in. You can use color if you want, um, but pencil's just fine. I'm going to start in the upper left hand corner. And then you're going to skip. And then you're going to, this is where it gets tricky. I'm telling you, if you have crayons or paint or colored pencils or markers and want to do this in color, you can. Do you see how I'm not spending a lot of time inside of this space? Just getting the shade in, and that's fine. That's all you really have to do. To continually shade this in like a checkerboard, watch this neat trick. If you go from one corner to the next, that's also going to get shaded. I'll do that for you again if you look the way. They go from one corner to the next. Then you know that that gets shaded. I'll do it for you one more time before I proceed and get done the whole thing. Off camera. This is a really fast way to color and it doesn't look like scribbling because I have controlled movement. I'm just kind of changing the direction. This is a good thing to know guys. Make sure your edges are nice and clean. Okay, so we have this little triangle. We're going to keep white and then we move on to this one. I'll be back with finished work. I'm about halfway done coloring right now. This is by far going to take you the longest. Be careful of your lines. Coloring inside the lines is important. What you do inside the lines, as long as you fill it in, I'm not, oops, I'm not really that worried about, as you can see as I'm coloring. Some of you are really good at shading. Um, you've shown me time and time again, you're very interested in going an extra step. So. I'm going to show you at the end what you can do to even enhance this into more 3D, and I think you're going to really love it. But just checking in here, about halfway done coloring. My uh, corners match up. The edges are nice and strong. I'm almost done, about halfway there. All right, this is what I want to see at the end. I want to see nice uniformly coloring. Like, I don't want you to start off coloring heavy up here and get lighter as you go down here or somehow get darker in spots. Everything is uniformly colored in. Okay, it's all the same kind of shade of pencil or color pencil or marker. Now, I promised some of you that I'd show you a little bit extra trick you can do, and this is optional. This is what I want handed in by Friday, but this is what this is optional. This is awesome. You ready? In the circles only. If you use a medium that's erasable, like a pencil. You can take these bowed pieces and give them, just in the very middle, a little bit of a shine to them. Bridget Riley did not use shading. That's why the other work that I first showed you, that when I first popped back on, is what I want, but if you want to take your work a little bit step further, we did the most basic form of optical illusion art here today, people. As you go on with different art classes, it gets a little bit more complicated. Like I started you out with the dashes with most optical art, you have to really know your math. You have to be really good at plotting and gridding and all that fun stuff a lot of you tend to kind of not like. I was never mathematical either until I got to college, and guess what guys, I was almost a math teacher. I love it so much, but it's not for everyone, so I wouldn't touch the checkerboard background. I would only do it to the circle pieces, but that's due Friday. I probably will expect to see you rejoin Meet or use me during teacher virtual hours because sometimes it's really hard to tell where you're supposed to color. For example, I had lines left over from my grid in areas right here on the circle where I had to continue shading in this bow, but I knew that because I've done this lesson so many times because optical illusions are such a primary part 
of learning how to draw art and learning about art. So questions like that, use me, email me, send me a picture, send a bat signal. Let's get on to meet again in the afternoon. Let's join meet in the morning. I'm here. I'm here to help. It looks easy, but when you start and you do it, you probably have questions. Just use me. Get a hold of me. Let's work it out together.